So thank you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Alexandria Library for tonight's workshop, Reduce It and Reuse, Sustainability Made Simple. Uh, my name is Megan Zimmerman, and I'm an adult services librarian with the Alexandria Library, and I'm so happy again to partner with Transportation and Environmental Services for this event. Um, this program is being recorded, and as mentioned, will be available um, from the library's uh, YouTube page under the Sustainability Series. If you have questions, um, which will be answered towards the end of the program, um, please use the Q&A feature. And if you have general comments or need to get a hold of me um, due to technical issues or other general questions, please use the chat. That way we can distinguish between questions for our speaker um, as well. Um, and the, the icons for both the chat and the Q&A can be found towards the bottom of your Zoom window. Our presenter tonight is Howard Lee, and he is the program recycling program analyst for the Resource Recovery Division of the Department of Transportation and Environmental Services. And joining us as well is Helen Lee, the Environmental Program Manager for Resource Recovery Division. Uh, Howard, thank you so much for being here. I'm really looking forward to what you have to share with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for this opportunity. And I want to just uh, wish everyone a happy Earth Month and Earth Day coming up. Uh, so this is sort of timely presentation, I would say. So a lot of people are, are sort of looking to make some changes for the environment. And I am happy to share uh, some of my experiences and things that I've learned uh, throughout my sort of zero waste journey. Um, and thank you to the Alexandria Library for uh, hosting us tonight. And with that, I will get started. Uh, again, my name is Howard Lee with the City of Alexandria. Um, resource recovery. I uh, actually handle your recycling uh, from day to day. But today I'm going to talk to you about a little bit different pro uh, 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 activity, and that is reducing and reusing, which actually becomes before recycling. So that is sort of the pre preferred method uh, that we would like to uh, see us all practice, which is sort of reduce our waste and then reuse where we can. And I know a lot of people have some questions about that and how they can get started. And I'm gonna to try to show you how. So how do you get started? So low waste living for beginners, uh, it kind of starts with a mindset. Um, and so what I always tell people when they are getting started is to be mindful when grocery shopping. Uh, so that is kind of the first thing you'll start doing is sort of paying attention to what you shop, where you shop, uh, what you buy and how you buy it. Uh, I always take a, about a week or so to kind of just do what I've normally been doing and then sort of uh, sort of take a little bit of notes of what I bought, where am I getting this plastic from, or to sort of do a little, uh, I guess you would say assessment of yourself uh, to see where you are generating waste. And then you can start to uh, do some of these mindful grocery shopping process, processes that I'll talk about a little later. You're gonna start eating real food and reducing some of your food uh, wrapped in plastic. Your processed food, convenience food, to-go food, all of that will actually come in some sort of plastic wrap or container. But when you start cooking your own food, you sort of eliminate uh, that need for the packaging and that waste. You're gonna start shopping at farmer's markets. Farmer's markets uh, typically have a lot of fresh produce and items that you can buy without packaging. Uh, one tip I did, uh, I started shopping a lot more frequently, but for less food. Uh, so when you start shopping for a lot more fresh vegetables uh, and fruits, uh, you probably don't want to overbuy. A lot of people tend to buy like, you know, the large uh, bin of strawberries. Uh, you're going to buy, you know, the whole bag of apples. Uh, but again, going back to mindful shopping, if uh, you find yourself not being able to finish that then sort of buy less, maybe buy two apples and then go back to the grocery store later on in the week to buy uh, more things if, if you need. Uh, but that's sort of a, a great tip just to sort of shop a little for a little less and then more frequently. Uh, composting is also a great way to sort of reduce your waste overall with, with your food scraps. You can actually take those and compost them at one of our drop-off locations throughout the city, there are four. Or you can start your own compost pile at home. Uh, there's a lot of great videos and workshops 
that will show you how to start composting and take a lot of that food waste out of the, uh, the, the waste stream. Uh, you always wanna to try to practice a repair and replace, uh, repair before replace attitude. So if there's something that you have that's broken, I know a lot of times we tend to think that it's just, we just toss it and get a new one, uh, but you probably wanna uh, start looking into doing more of re getting things repaired, taking it to a shop. We have a repair directory on our website uh, that will help you start repairing some items and keeping again, those out of the waste stream. Uh, secondhand stores and shops, those are also great uh, places to buy items that uh, sort of not new products. They may also have new packaging on them. Uh, you could probably buy them right off the shelf. Some other great practices, you wanna always carry your reusable bag and your water bottle. Uh, you will reduce sort of the use, single use plastic. So you'll be looking for uh, reusable options for sort of the shopping bag, plastic straw, uh, your stir, those all have sort of reusable options that you can carry. Um, you can replace the plastic bottle uh, and soda bottles uh, with cans and also some refillable options, which we'll talk about later. So how do you shop without packaging? Uh, you sort of such a little zero waste kit. Uh, you're gonna bring your reusable bag. You see how the bag in the background, so we want to always carry one of those. Uh, mesh bags, these little mesh bags are really great. You can buy them at any of the organic stores. Uh, you can shop for them on Amazon. Uh, these are really good for bringing home fruits, vegetables. Uh, you can also fill up some uh, beans and grains, maybe rice can fit in here, pasta can fit in these. They're also great for storage, uh, so you can put uh, green leafy vegetables in these, uh, keep them a little moist, and put them in your fridge to uh, keep them uh, fresh for a little bit longer. So those are the mesh produce bags. Glass jars are also a great option to carry to the store. Uh, so when you go to the bulk store, and you'll see this a little bit later, what they do is actually they'll weigh the jar, so you get a little uh, number there on how much the, the jar is, the weight of the jar, and that's reduced from the weight of the product that's in the jar. You only be charged for this when you shop, so you can bring your own glass jars and bottles, uh, metal cans, metal containers if you have. So that's a really simple kit that you have uh, to go shopping with. You may also want to keep some larger containers, glass containers at home, uh, so you can store them once you get them home. And we'll talk about some storage options a little bit later. So where are you gonna shop? So we will be looking for a bulk section or a bulk aisle at any store. A produce aisles always have again, uh, produce without packaging that you just see your produce laid out there. Uh, farmers markets and open air markets and secondhand stores and yard sales. Those areas all will have items that are just on the shelf without any sort of plastic wrap package uh, that you can pick up and purchase. And before I'll just switch over a little bit to our video. So I have a quick little video here um, that will show you exactly my process for kind of going into the grocery store and shopping without packaging or package. Uh, so hopefully this will get some good tips for you here. And I can answer any quick questions if you have. Sure, we have a, a couple of comments that came in. Ellen shared, um, you can use re reuse bags for fresh produce instead of the single use bags, as you mentioned. And then you can grow your own herbs to reduce waste. Um, and then someone asked a question, are there issues with stores refusing glass and metal containers from home for fear of sanitation issues? I always love to use my own coffee tea mug, but usually it isn't allowed. Any ideas? If you have a store, sort of like uh, the store that I visited, Mom's Organic, or a store that uh, actually does bulk, uh, they don't have a problem with it. Just like I just showed you how you kind of have your jar weighed, uh, you can bring these in. These are from home that I use. Uh, I've never had an issue there or some of the other bulk stores that I've had. 
you may have some issues at grocery stores like a Safeway or Giant. They often don't do bulk and allow sort of reusable containers to come in. So I highly recommend if you're going to shop, shop at stores that are specifically for bulk. Great, thank you. That's all the questions now. You're probably feeling a little stressed and a little worried about how to go package-free and reduce your waste. I'm Howard Lee with the City of Alexandria Resource Recovery Division, and I'm here to show you exactly how easy it is. When you walk into a grocery store, today we're at Mom's Organic, which has a very nice bulk aisle. You'll see a lot of the items that you can buy without packaging here, from nuts to grains, so pasta, you can buy anything like baking goods that are all available without packaging. All you need to do is bring a few little items like a little mesh bag to carry them in or a glass jar if you have with a nice lid. I need some pasta. <laughs> Fruits and vegetables come without any packaging. So they come in their own packaging. You really don't need to add them into another plastic bag when shopping. You can just place them in your cart. Very simple. Once you do get your fruits and vegetables home, it's very easy to wash them off with a little water and vinegar. And that way you'll reduce the amount of any pests that you bring in or any germs. All right, that's all. Oh, I do need an onion. Coffee is one of the easiest things to go without packaging. You can always come to any of these stores, find your beans here, grind them up, no charge, put them in your paper bag that you can use here. And this is totally recyclable or compostable. Or you can bring your own jar and fill up for coffee. I typically shop the outside aisles first. That's where you'll find your fresh fruits, meats, and vegetables. If you do need to purchase items with some type of packaging, then you have some options to choose things that are recyclable and that don't go to the trash. Glass, you can recycle glass here in Alexandria. So if you are looking to purchase items with some packaging, choose glass option. Metal is also an infinitely recyclable product. So anything in metal can be recycled over and over again. Not all bulk stores have this option, but if you can find soap, and detergent, uh, stain removers, uh, dishwashing detergent, disinfectant uh, here in a refillable station. Just refill these up with your containers and off you go. Thank you. You too. probably feeling a little stressed. All right. That's a quick little video there showing you kind of how I go. I use Mom's Organic uh, Market. Uh, to shop. They have a really great uh, aisle there. There's a lot of products that they uh, have for you to buy in bulk uh, from the grains and the pasta that you see there. Uh, there's a lot of different, uh, the fruits and vegetables aisle that they have is also really great. Uh, they do beer that you can refill in some items. And I'll show you a bit to our uh, shopping list here in a second. Uh, what we did is sort of put together this package-free Alexandria map uh, where we list a lot of different stores that where you can buy items in uh, bulk or without packaging. Someone mentioned Macy's and Greens in the chat. Uh, there's a Spice and Tea Exchange. Harris Teeter has some items in bulk. You'll see Mom's Organic, uh, Global Food. Uh, we also took the time to look for some places where you can buy things like soap uh, that don't have packaging. Uh, so you can just go through this little map that we've added to our reuse directory uh, on our website. So 
if you take a look here and we'll put the link in the chat to our reuse and reduce reuse and other recycling opportunities. We have our uh, reuse directory here. And then you can take a quick look down here for the shop package free and refill directory. Uh, that'll take you to a spreadsheet uh, that has the same list that you see on the map there. Is my spreadsheet showing? I'm not sure if that's showing. We can see it. Great. So yeah, we put, added that to our zero waste, I'm sorry, into our uh, City of Alexandria uh, reuse directory map. Um, you can go click that on the website and we'll add that link to the chat. So what items can you buy? Uh, obviously I said you'll be a little more mindful of what you do shop for. So you wanna choose more fruits and vegetables, uh, choose foods that are low on the food chain, not suggesting anyone go vegetarian, but you'll be doing a lot more fruits and vegetables. Those things tend to come without the, the packaging. So your grains, your rice, pasta, uh, you can buy wheat, oats, uh, flour, bread, uh, some cheese, there are dry beans you can purchase, oils, fresh herbs, uh, so the list here, soap, detergents, shampoo. Uh, again, at Mom's, they can refill beer in your growler, some nut butters, honey, kombucha, popcorn, which is great. That's a, a snack food that I sort of switched to. Uh, it's really hard uh, going package-free when you like potato chips. Uh, so you tend to, again, be mindful what you shop for, so I have to switch uh, eating chips and buy popcorn, uh, nuts and dry fruit. You can buy some pet food without packaging. Uh, spices, uh, we'll see. There's a nice spice aisle at Mom's that you can buy some spices there without any packaging. Again, refill your jar. Uh, Excuse me, Howard, I'm sorry. Can you, can you put the presentation in full screen so that we can- Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. A little bit clearer. Thank you. I did not realize there was not there. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. There we go, sorry about that. Uh, coffee and loose leaf tea. Uh, so here's the list again. Pasta, flour, bread, cheese, popcorn, some pet food and spices. All those things you can buy without packaging at a lot of these different stores that you can find on our map. Uh, obviously at Mom's Organic, you can find these. Uh, items uh, again for without any plastic wrap at all. Here's the herbs and spice rack at the Mom's Organic. There's some uh, soaps, so your personal care products. Here are the growlers that you can refill. They also have some proteins that are sustainable, and without any packaging, you can refill uh, there at their store. Once you get these items home, uh, I highly recommend you want to sort of start decanting these items. And what I mean by that is I, I may bring it home in this mesh bag. Uh, I'm going to put it in the, a jar, a different jar, maybe an airtight sealed container or a large bucket. Uh, you see here in the photo, there's some beeswax wraps. These are really great for anything that you might use for plastic wrap. You can uh, sort of put this uh, on cheese, uh, if you have little jars, you, you typically put a plastic film on it. These beeswax wraps are really great for uh, uh, using as a sustainable product um, and you don't have to throw those in the trash. You can uh, pretty much reuse these, compost them. I, I think some of them are compostable. The mesh bags used for uh, your herbs and spices. Uh, I recommend getting a label maker so you sort of put date labels yourself when you purchase items. Uh, one tip is you'll be, if you shop at farmer's markets, your food tends to be a little bit fresh uh, as opposed to from, coming from the grocery store. It doesn't have that long travel time. Uh, so when you get home, you can always judge your freshness, like where you purchased your items and label them yourself. There's a great website, savethefood.com uh, that has a storage directory that will give you some great tips on how to store certain foods in your cabinets, how long they will last. 
These little uh, desiccant packets here are great for st storing in your dry goods. You can just throw a pack in there that'll absorb any moisture uh, and they, they'll keep for a lot longer. I've sort of invested in these uh, containers, produce containers here that are sort of stay fresh containers. Also with the little executive packet on top. So these sort of keep these things fresh. Grapes in here, but they're staying pretty fresh for a long time. Uh, you can also use some squeeze bottles to make sauces, bring home your oil and vinegar, uh, and you can use these uh, instead of having those bottles. In glass bottles, you can just take those to the recycling uh, drop-off center. Lastly, I just kind of want to mention reducing and reuse is sort of the name of the game here. When, the, when you look at the waste management hierarchy, uh, the most preferred is source reduction and reusing for, uh, first. Uh, so again, reducing, I, I guess that I mentioned earlier, going to the grocery store less uh, and uh, or more frequently and purchasing less, reusing when you can, then recycling and composting energy recovery after that, and treatment and disposal last. Um, again, some quick tips from me, like I said, mentioned popcorn, snacks, things like, uh, like that you can make at home. You can make chips, popcorn, baked goods like brownies. A lot of those things tend to come with uh, foil wrapping or packaging that can't be recycled. Uh, so again, just take some time to be mindful that maybe you can make some snacks, make a few quick switches. Uh, for those items uh, there. And reusable is best for water bottles or uh, bottled beverages, if you can find anything in a reusable uh, way and re reduce is just my last message there. We do have the Alexandria Reuse Directory. Uh, again, I mentioned reusing, uh, we'll put a link there in the chat. Always look at our guide to service for any tips on recycling and our what goes where tool for uh, just questions and general questions on how you can recycle certain items at your home. Uh, the reuse directory will also have the same link and map to the package free uh, map. So you will have a list of all those stores and the items that they have without packaging there. Uh, and I think that's it for my quick presentation. If anyone has any questions, uh, I'm ready to take them. I want to thank Moms Organic for letting me film uh, there. So that was really fun. And I think if they are around or in the presentation, they may be available to answer some questions for you as well. Great, thank you so much. So we did have a, a couple of questions that have come in so far. Um, Ellen asked, are bulk grains about the same price as packaged grains? Is anyone, I, I haven't found me that I've paid much of a difference uh, in that typically, no. Uh, and I would say from, you may pay more with things in packaging because you're gonna be paying for that packaging and the, and the marketing. Uh, typically, when you're buying a bulk, I think the same idea it's coming from uh, maybe places a lot closer, uh, so you don't have that extra shipping costs. Uh, but I haven't found that I've spent more on, um, on any of my items. I buy coffee regularly, and I don't, I'm not spending any more in, by buying it bulk as opposed to going to buy that oil package container. Thank you. Um, another question came in. Um, moms used to have a much greater recycling center. They partnered with TerraCycle to take things like snack bags, juice pouches, empty HBA containers like toothpaste tubes. I took so much there until mom ended the program. Is there anything the city has where we can take such items? It pains me to throw those things away. And, and what items were those sort of? Uh... So sort of those sort of like the the foil plastic paper things that often that TerraCycle recycled. Um, like the, the chip bags. Yeah, those. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, they don't. Helen, do you have any? 
Yeah, I think, um, do we have uh, moms on the line who might be able to answer that question? Oh. Moms, you might have to write in the chat if you do want to answer. <laughs> I guess in terms of from the city's perspective, uh, we currently do not have a TerraCycle program um, for the city. Uh, as Howard mentioned, one of the you know best ways is kind of pre prevention as much as possible and using um, refillable options when possible. But realizing that sometimes we're going to have un um, unrecyclable waste that's unavoidable, um, but you know, trying our best to use refillable items are, are the best option. Thank you. Really, um, it's just about reducing, I guess, my last point. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, a lot of the snacks or the things that do come in those, that type of packaging. Um, and that is the things you can probably make yourself at home. Uh, but I, I, there's also, you know, nuts, there's like chocolates and things that you can buy also in bulk that sort of help you make those items um, if you can. It will take some time. I did a lot of research. There's a lot of videos. You gotta learn how to cook a little bit <laughs> uh, to make this, make this work. Thank you. Um, Carol asks, are, do you have any suggestions for a small bin or container that could be kept on the kitchen counter? I, I'm guessing, do you mean for containing your bulk items is it for for the bulk items i guess that we'll is. go with that yeah we'll enter that okay <laughs> yeah i have sort of these nicer ones that i kind of picked up <laughs> uh, that you can keep on the counter you know uh, these sort of have a really nice airtight seal uh, if you want to use something like that glass. You can always do some ceramic ones, but a lot of times they may not have that airtight uh, seal for you. Um, but it's really, you know, if you want to keep them in your pantry, anything like this will, will work too, as long as it's got a nice seal for uh, storage. Oh, for compost, yes. Uh, so a compost caddy, you can uh, keep on your counter. Make sure it's something that's aerated, uh, that has you know, can let some air in um, and really small. You can look for those on, on Amazon sells them, uh, but just look for kitchen counter caddy. And we also have some caddies that we'll be yeah. giving away uh, this weekend um, at the start of uh, sort of celebrating Earth Day. So at all our farmers markets, uh, we'll have available uh, some countertop caddies, compost caddies that you can pick up. They're first come, first serve. So Get to your nearest farmer's market quick uh, to pick one up. Great, thank you. Um, Anne asked, can you please- oh, can I also add on one more thing? Another suggestion um, a lot of composters do is sometimes they already use existing containers that they might already have at home. For example, like a takeout container um, that they have, like a plastic takeout container, put their food waste there and stick it in the freezer because it stacks nicely and it keeps the odors and pest issues a non-issue. And so it's just something to also consider when you're thinking about composting um, at home. Great, thank you. Um, and ask, can you please highlight related to composting the city's food waste composting program? Yes. So we have for the actually I can share the website in the chat. It's alexandriava.gov slash food waste. Um, we have four stations. Show the sharing here. I pull that up for you. I see the, the four locations there. There's Old Town, Del Rey, Four Mile Run, and West End. Uh, and, uh, thank you, Camilla, for sharing um, the links on our chat function. Yes, thank you, Camilla. Uh, and here are the hours, Saturdays for the first two, Old, uh, Old Town, Del Rey, 
So there'll be caddies available there on Saturday. And then on Sunday, four mile run and uh, the West End Farmers Market will be opening this Sunday. Uh, you'll be able to get your caddies there. The types of, and so these are kind of what the caddy looks like. You can see you put your fruits, vegetables, scraps in this. Uh, there's bread, pasta, rice. A lot of things you can purchase package free can actually just go right in your compost bin once it's done. Uh, flowers, eggshells. Uh, we don't accept meat or dairy products, any fish oil or pet waste. Obviously these things go in the trash, uh, but yeah. And again, the link is in this website. You can get a flyer that's listed below that has you know, what you can put in the bin. And I'll say we have this at the library too. So you can pick a flyer up here if you need to see what you can compost with the city's program. Um, another question is, um, where can we recycle prescription bottles? My pharmacy doesn't take them back anymore. You can go in your recycling bin, put the cap on. Uh, so you can put those in your recycling bin, put your cap on, just remove that little cotton swab and that little, um, can they leave that little plastic nub thing in there too? And just throw that in your bin. Yeah, I think some, um, some people, choose to take the label off for any privacy, you know, issues, and you know, if you want to you know, take off any confidential information. Um, someone asked, does the city recycle electronics? We, we do, there's an electronics drop off. Uh, so at our hazardous waste center, you can drop off your electronics uh, for safe recycling. Thank you. Um, Kathy asks, would you consider adding the recycle code such as number four to your list of what goes where? Sometimes it's hard to figure out what to call something to find in your list, but it does not have the recycle code number on it. So I, I can help answer that question. Um, the recycling plastic numbers um, that are seen on a lot of plastic containers they don't tell often the whole story of what can or cannot be recycled. Sometimes it has to be a specific code with a type of packaging material. Um, and so it's really uh, something that has to be the right shape and the right number, which makes it really confusing. And in order to kind of reduce some of that confusion, what the city has done is we created a what goes where tool, which can be found on our website. And Howard, if you want to bring that up really quick, it could be found on alexandriavia.gov slash resource recovery or slash recycling, whatever is easier to remember. And um, there's a really neat resource where you can look up any type of um, specific material and it'll tell you whether it can be recycled or not. Thank you. Um, Tia asked, um, do you have any cost or time-saving tips specifically for parents? Sorry, what was that question? Oh, do you have any cost or time-saving tips specifically for parents, I guess, um, to, to avoid using plastic waste, especially when you have to make those, yeah. those treats yourself? Yeah, I think making the treats yourself is a good one uh, for parents. Again, you, I, you know, the timing, I know it's difficult because I did mention you, you shop a little bit more uh, frequently for uh, less food, but you think if you kind of make it a family thing and kind of include everybody in your household, uh, making everybody part of this, this journey, that'll help. Uh, so cookies, you can bake. Uh, pizza night, you can also make pizza yourself. So I think cooking those things are really uh, sort of a great way to get kids involved. And uh, if you kind of show them how to do it, um, I think they'll think it's pretty neat too. Um, these little bottles are not easy to fill. So uh, something your kids can do. <laughs> yeah, I think another option is, you know, um, there's a lot of parents, I think that, or just any families in general that uh, meal prep ahead of time, like, you know, maybe Sunday meal prep days and things like that. And um, when doing so, you can use reusable containers like glassware and to-go containers. And that could be uh, another option to think about how we can go more package-free. 
Great, thank you. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of things that have come up in the chat, this ongoing discussion about if it's cheaper to buy in bulk or not. Um, it looks like some products might be cheaper, like oatmeal, um, other things may not. Um, a nice thing about um, taking your compost scraps to the um, farmer's markets is, uh, I didn't know this, that you can actually get some dirt there. So you can do sort of a trade off um, from dropping off your food scraps and picking up the, the I guess, the product of the composted uh, food. Um, and then Pat mentions that the nice thing about the mom's composting bin is it's available all the time. Um, and Ellen mentions she uses uh, bulk, when she buys bulk autumn, she uses like an old um, container. Um, I just lost it, excuse me, to, um, to sort of refill um, for grains and flowers. So those containers that you get that had something in them, you can also reuse them. Um, let's see, uh, Anonymous asked a question, um, can any type of plastic bag or film be recycled in the store drop-off boxes? I, I'm guessing like a- long as it's stretchy store? plastic. So um, Ziploc bags, like yes, you know, newspaper bags, the dry cleaning bags, any sort of stretchy film. If it's a stretchy plastic, then you can drop it off. Yeah. If it's that type of plastic uh, that rips, you sort of, uh, I think the cereal box, uh, that sort of sleeve inside, that sort of rips kind of like paper, you, you don't want to drop that off uh, to the bin. But stretchy plastic and film, yes. Great, thank you. Um, oh, and then Marlene mentions that I have a hard time finding on the website where to take things that cannot be, cannot be recycled, for example, at Kavanta. Um, so I'm guessing she's wondering about a, a way to find where to take some of those things. Yeah, and you know, um, Howard has it on the screen right here, um, our What Goes Where directory. Please take a look and check that out because it's a really great resource that we're not only just um, encouraging residents to figure out what material goes where, but there's also um, options there if you have, let's say, materials that you can repair and give it a second life, for example, furniture um, or uh, materials that could be donated and um, picked up in, or dropped off. There are um, tons of um, options there. And um, if you have very specific examples um, that you're having you know, difficulties, you can definitely reach out to us. We can kind of support and find uh, where, where that material should go. But um, this resource is really um, uh, comprehensive and has a ton of materials, not just your typical you know, plastic container, uh, but from furniture to hazardous waste to, um, you know, what do you do with uh, a battery that's rechargeable versus non-rechargeable battery? So um, definitely check out this resource. That is very neat. I didn't know that that exists though. I'm glad to. Yeah, and what, while that. we're also on this page, um, I'd love to also share um, the sorting game. So if you have, um, you know, kids or actually with any, um, any age group, uh, you can play this uh, fun sorting game to learn how to recycle and what goes where. Um, so you can, you know, click through level one through five and, you know, it gives you these choices of what material should go in which cart. In this example, milk cartons, um, we get this question a lot. Um, even soup cartons or aseptic cartons, those can be recycled. We saw the paint can going to the HHW bin, the straws, um, disposable straws going to trash, the metal uh, aluminum can into the recycling, the plastic deli packaging should go in the trash and, um, and cables, uh, of course, at the HHW Center at Colvin Street, that's free and accessible for the public. Um, and playing this game, you get this really cool interactive way to build a park in city uh, of Alexandria. You can see City Hall and um, the Masonic Temple in the background there. Um, and yeah, after five, um, after five uh, levels, you actually get this fun certificate. And it's just a great fun way to learn um, with the kids. Maybe if you're going on a road trip and you wanna have this on the iPad or something, uh, it's uh, uh, online and um, fun to play. That is fun. Um, it looks like uh, another question, can you share any plans or potential plans to have composting curbside service along with recycling? 
Can I hear that question again? I sure. Um, I, it sounds like they're wondering if the city has any plans to do curbside composting pickup along. Oh, the okay. Way. Yes. Um, that's a really good question. And that's something that our current budget process is, is evaluating. Um, the, uh, we are looking into uh, a curbside um, composting pilot for FY23. More details as the budget gets adopted will be coming soon. And yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing the details as, um, as Howard and I work on, on that program. That is exciting. Um, yeah, I know we've gotten that question before, so I'm sure people are, are interested. Yep. All right. Um, if you do have any more questions, feel, feel free to put them in the, in the Q&A. Um, I, I will say I use your, uh, your resource recovery directory all the time, not only for myself, but when we get questions at the library, we often get, where can I take this and this? And it's so nice to have that right on hand. Um, to, to let people know there are options in the city, so not too far away. And I, I also just sort of piggyback on this um, idea of getting things repaired. Um, save the date on May 21st, uh, Barrett Library will be hosting another Fix-It Clinic, which is an opportunity for people to bring items that are not working correctly or have broken, um, and we have uh, volunteers on hand who will actually repair those things for you for free. Um, so it's another way to, instead of throwing things away, get, get items fixed um, that you can continue to use. So there was a question on the question and answer section about with, where to take materials that we can't find any you know, purpose for, whether it's reduce, reuse, donate, repair. Um, and if there are materials that, you know, should not go into your trash. Um, you know, I'm trying to think, figure out kind of like what specific item you are um, kind of looking for, but I did link a um, part of our website in the trash collection of other solid waste facility disposal options. So that's something you can consider looking at. That's great. And, and the the page to the resource recovery page is in the chat. Um, can maybe it's a little bit far up. Could you post that again? Maybe yeah, I think I put it in the answered section of the questions and answer. I think it got moved. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions about reduced packaging or any of the uh, bulk shopping. I, I hope everyone gets started soon, maybe this weekend. Uh, the one thing I'll suggest, start small. I didn't, I didn't just turn this over right away. I chose one thing to start with and then I progressed. Um, so, and, and again, you, you produce a lot of waste in your kitchen uh, and then in the bathroom. Uh, so once you kind of get your kitchen down, you sort of move on to your household products from there. So. Uh, take your time uh, in doing this. Choose one item maybe once until you get the hang of it. See how your family enjoys it. Um, and then see how far you get. And down to very little. Sometimes I don't even have trash or recycling to put out for the week. So <laughs> I'm really excited. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> we have one more question that came in. Is there a best way to approach manufacturers to ask them to reduce their packaging? That is an excellent question and something that the city has been really advocating for. And um, I think when you're, it's, it's kind of talking about product stewardship and producer responsibility, right? Um, and uh, it is um, legislation that we have been um, really kind of, you know, supporting and pushing for, um, but really, you know, at a consumer level, at an individual level, um, we have a lot of power also. We have a lot of buying power. We have the option to choose um, different types of packaging. And, um, you know, I think that uh, resulted in um, really innovative um, and uh, grocery stores that are really pushing the agenda, pushing, you know, forward for less packaging, less packaging waste and uh, more reusable or recyclable materials. Um, 
so yeah we, we definitely have a, a lot of power and then ellen asks have have people tried a shampoo bar yeah that's not, a good question i have not tried a shampoo uh bar um i will say uh you know, you start learning, trying to figure out what things you can make yourself. So I tried to make some soaps, uh, not very successful, uh, <laughs> but you can buy uh, bar soaps that are great. Uh, and Mom's has a refillable, I think, shampoo uh, station. So there's a great option there if you need to refill shampoo. Uh, Aisha put in the chat, she loves her shampoo and conditioner bars. And I will say I, I do use um, bar shampoo too, and it's come a long way from when it first came out. It used to be just very dry, but now it has a nice leather to it. So they've really improved those. Neat. Oh, and another question came in. Are there local restaurants using reusable takeout containers? I don't do a lot of takeout, but haven't heard of any. If not, could the city incentivize this? So we can't um, quite, I guess, we can always encourage uh, restaurants for using, you know, reusable, recyclable, compostable materials. Um, what I think um, we have been kind of seeing is, you know, some um, restaurants trying to use more compostable options. Um, what I do think um, we've seen a lot, especially during the pandemic, is more and more um, consumers I guess, ordering in using like Grubhub or Uber Eats or things like that. And so um, one of the um, options that you can kind of see when you're making um, those purchases uh, through your through an app is um, choosing the option to go kind of um, utensil free or you can put in the comments, you know, I don't need the 400 soy sauce packets or the ketchup container because I have ketchup at home, right? Um, and so that is another uh, way to kind of um, reduce our consumption of those individual materials that we might already have at home. And one thing I do when I, if I go out to eat, I know I'm going to have leftovers. I'll usually take a container with me um, to put my leftovers in versus getting a container from the store <laughs> or the restaurant. All right. Um, oh, thank you, Marlene, for sharing information about the Fix-It Clinic. All right. Um, if there's any more questions, we do have a few more minutes. Um, to ask about those. Um, and I'll also, again, just promoting the library all over the place, but um, we also have a number of books um, about zero waste or um, ways to um, reduce uh, your um, packaging at the library as well. Um, books like uh, Zero Toward Zero Waste, Living a Circular Life, um, Zero Waste Life Hacks, um, a life less throwaway. Um, so there's a number of things if you're wanting to just um, read up on this a little bit more to find out why it's so important. Um, we have a number of books um, in all of the, the libraries um, that can help you with that. Yes, and follow us on social media for more tips. Thank you, Camille. Great, right. and um, also, some restaurants will use a container that you bring, um, which is nice to know. All right, I think um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in, um, but thank you both so much. Um, Howard, this has been a wonderful presentation and really exciting. Um, it, it, it can feel like a huge undertaking once you start to like examine how much plastic is in our life and in our foods. Um, so these have been wonderful tips to sort of like get us on that road to, to really examining how we're using that plastic and what ways that we can get um, away from that. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Oh. <laughs> and Helen, thank you for jumping in with those questions. It's been wonderful um, to have um, both of you to answer our, our attendees' questions. Thank you all and happy Earth Month. Happy Earth happy Day Earth tomorrow. Month. Yes, happy Earth Day. All Take right, care. thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good evening. Bye.